everyone, Metallian Magic here, and today I am going to be opening a full booster box of Fate Reforged. Uh, I haven't put up too many videos on the channel lately, the past few months have been kind of busy, but I hope that this will uh, more than make up for that fact. Uh, we're going to be going through all 36 packs, uh, just as we did with Khans of Tarkir when we opened a booster box of that set, uh, and I'm going to open them uh, like I did last time going in uh, order from like pack one, two, three, and then the next three down, one, two, three, going left to right. So if you want to follow along to see what cards are in, you know, the first three packs left to right, then the next three left to right, etc., etc., through the whole box, that's the order in which I will be opening these packs. I'm going to put the box off to the side here so that uh, you can see this dragon. Felt like that was appropriate for this set as a background and also so that you can see the cards as I put them down on the mat. So let's get this plastic wrap off and let's let's do it. Uh, so first things first, we've got the uh, cool little poster insert you know that you can either put into a notebook uh, like into a binder or just hang up or do whatever you want with it I guess. <laughs> Kinda neat. All oh, right without it's weird they're like kind of <laughs> anyway off to the races we go pack actually is that because one of them moved over and I think these did one of the packs did move over like like I think this pack in transport moved so I'm gonna move this one over here because I think that's how it should be but I'm not sure or there's 35 packs in the box. 437. <laughs> hey, I mean, I did. So quick quick little story before I start that's fun, like a funny anecdote about that. I went to two Fate Reforged pre-releases. In the second pre-release, I chose the final Jeskai seated kit that they had available at the particular store. I opened up the kit and opened up my seated pack, and it was full of Sultai cards with a white rare. White is not blue, black, or green, and Sultai is not Jeskai. It was a mispacked pack, and because it was the last Jeskai box they had at the store, I couldn't exchange it for another Jeskai pack. Uh, interestingly enough, I stuck with it, and the rest of the packs in that box not only had really good Sultai cards, but like all of the dual lands that I received were in Sultai, or like one of the Sultai colors splashing white, and I had a white card I wanted to splash. So the deck actually turned out really sweet, but it was just very strange that I received a mispacked pre release kit. So. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna just open this off camera. I don't wanna subject you guys to really loud pack ru rustling, and the microphone obviously on this camera is front facing as most camera mics are. Ooh, there's a foil in here. I don't know what it is, but I just caught a shiny edge. Uh, so, I'll go quickly through all the cards, uh, but I'll really only focus on any notable cards, uh, like any cards that I think are notable for, for reasons that I want to discuss quickly, or obviously the, the rares, mythics, the, uh, the foils, etc. So we've got Rakshasa's Disdain, Reach of Shadows, Hooded Assassin, Even Skirmisher, Lotus Path Jin. Formless Nurturing, Sandstep Outcast, Teamer Battle Rage, Hunt the Weak. <clears throat> Our first uncommon is Orc Sure Shot. Uh, then Ruthless Instincts, and then Shock Maw. Uh, Shock Maw Dragon. Um, and our first rare or mythic. It's a rare. It's Teamer War Shaman. Uh, this guy seems very good and limited. Uh, I've been enjoying. Uh, in triple cons, drafting, not, not always, but I've had a lot of decks that I've enjoyed playing uh, that were base green, either Obzon or Sultai, or, or all four of those colors without red. Uh, this guy seems like he'll be very good in uh, draft decks of the like, and I wouldn't hesitate to first pick him. And our foil, it's a common, it's a foil Swiftwater Cliffs, so it's a foil um, uh, common gain land with the uh, Fate Reforged art. You guys can see that, and uh, behind that we should have another land. We do have our uh, inserted land. No basic land cards are in these packs. Most packs will have a gain land, but a few packs uh, in Fate Reforged will have, you know, uh, I think it's the, an average of 1.5 per box will have a fetch land. Um, and a manifest reminder card. So that is pack one. Moving right along, pack two. Oh, 
Okay, a lot of the, uh, so I haven't opened a booster box on the channel yet for a small set, and this is a small set containing, I believe, 185 cards. So a lot of the commons you will see many, many times. So we're just gonna really, I mean, I wanna show you each card in each pack, because I know there are some of you out there that like using these kind of uh, videos as draft, first pick, first pack analysis kind of things where it's like, oh, okay, if I opened this pack in draft, what card would I pick first? So I will show you all the commons, but I promise I will go through them quickly from here on out. Reach of Shadows, Hooded Assassin, Avon Skirmisher, Lotus Path Jin, Sultai Emissary, Ambush Krotik, Krotik, Right Into Being, uh, Goblin Heel Cutter, Map the Wastes, Collateral Damage. Uh, first uncommon is Mardu Woe Reaper. Diplomacy of the Wastes, and Destructor Dragon. We have a rare, we have a Frontier Siege. Kind of goes nicely with the Destructor Dragon art-wise here. So we have a Frontier Siege. Uh, one of the uh, sieges, there's a siege for every color in this set. And a Dismal Backwater, and a Spirit Token. Okay, so. Two green rares to start off the booster box. What cards am I most hoping to open? Well, this probably sounds obvious. Uh, I would love Ugin for the value, but uh, I do want to play with Monastery Mentor and Soulfire Grandmaster, so I would like to open those. A Whisperwood Elemental would be sweet uh, as a sideboard card in uh, red green or teamer mid range, um, and I want to play more of that deck in the near future. And uh, there are definitely some uncommons that I would like to pick up a playset of uh, throughout this box. Stuff like Wild Slash and Valor Stance and Reality Shift. The three uncommons that are probably going to make the biggest splash in constructed formats. Uh, so we have Grim Contest, Pressure Point, Even Skirmisher, Lotus Path Jin, Hooded Assassin, Ethereal Ambush, Defiant Ogre, Whisperer of the Wilds, Collateral Damage, Meringue River Prowler is our first uncommon. Break through the line, and Valor Stance. So speaking of Valor Stance, here's copy number one of that card. Very good card. We have a rare, we have a Dragon Scale General. This card uh, was in my pre-release pool for the first pre-release that I attended, uh, and I did build a primarily blue-white deck uh, on that day with uh, a splash of red, it was a Jeskai deck. And uh, this guy certainly doesn't do a lot when you're behind, uh, but there were games where I was able to curve out, play this guy on four after an attack, and just start taking over the game because of the bonus that this card grants. So, uh, I don't know if this is a card that uh, is just... I mean, it's, it's certainly not going to always win you the game when you cast it in limited, but I, I do uh, have good experience with this card thus far. Uh, and we have a Foil Fascination. So, here's a Foil Fascination. It's a nice looking foil. Uh, and we have a Bloodfell Caves. And a Warrior Token. I love the art on these Warrior Tokens. Uh, these tokens are produced by Mardu Strike Leader, a rare that we will perhaps be seeing later on in this box. Okay. On to pack six. Uh, six, four. What am I talking about? I'm already thinking ahead to the end of this uh, this next group of three. <laughs> Sandblast, Jeskai Sage, Sultai Runemark, Grim Contest, Pressure Point, Return to the Earth, Great Horn Krushok, Goblin Heel Cutter, Ambush Krotik, uh, Obzon Beastmaster. Uh, I had this guy during my second pre release and. Uh, I certainly enjoyed playing this guy in a Sultai deck that had a lot of high toughness creatures like Sultai Soothsayer. Uh, he works beautifully with a turn to Archer's Parapet. Uh, Bloodfire Enforcers. Grave Strength. And a Shamanic Revelation. So lots of green rares thus far. Uh, oh, well, I mean, it's cool looking. It's a Foil Dragon Bell Monk. So three foils already out of four packs. I wonder what that means for the rest of the box, but Foil Dragon Bell Monk. And a Fetch Land? Nope, a Swiftwater Cliffs. A Spirit Token. So, 
when we opened our cons box, we were bombarded with value early. A Sarkin, a Sorin, a uh, Flooded Strand, a Polluted Delta. Uh, this box, through four packs, has not bombarded us with value, though. Many of the rares in this set are going to be suppressed in value due to the high value of certain mythics in the set and the fetch land uh, you know, possibility, the fact that you could open a fetch land in a pack. Uh, that being said, there definitely are some rares that I would be very excited to open. Tassigur the Golden Fang, Crux of Fate, um, Flame Wake Phoenix, so we'll see what, uh, what comes up in this pack. Hobbs on Advantage, Refocus, Douse in Gloom, Will of the Naga, love this art. One of my favorite pieces of artwork in the set. Wayne Reynolds. Uh, Obzon Sky Captain, Feral Krushok, Greathorn Krushok, Bathe in Dragonfire, Frontier Mastodon, Defiant Ogre. Our first uncommon is Obzon Kingard, <clears throat> Vault Breaker, Neutralizing Blast, and our rare or mythic. Oh, nice. Uh, Shu Yun the Silent Tempest. This is a card that I. Uh, I wanted a copy of, in fact, I want at least one copy of all of the, uh, the ancient cons cycle, uh, you know, Yasova, Alicia, Shuyun, um, Dagatar, and, uh, Tassigur. and now I actually, I have Alicia, Yasova, and Shuyun. I just need Dagatar, or no, I have Tassigur too, um, Shuyun, Alicia, yeah, now I just need Dagatar to have, uh, all, all five of them. I had Yasova at my second pre-release, um, I enjoyed playing with her. Rugged Highlands. And our first non-token, our first uh, just kind of like ad card. Shu Yun seems like a card that could be played in uh, just guy tempo or just guy tokens, though he carries with him a lot of risk uh, because obviously you can play a non-creature spell, pay for his activated ability, and then get blown out by a removal spell in a way. Um, I also think that he might be worth looking at in uh, as a one of in blue white heroic. Although both of those decks are pretty tight on slots, and uh, Jeskai has a lot of options at the three drop slot, like Monastery Mentor and um, Goblin Rabble Master, and non creature cards like Jeskai Ascendancy that for the token build is essential. So we'll see. <clears throat> Ancestral Vengeance is next, our first uh, common in this pack, then War Flare, Soul Summons. Sultai Skullkeeper, Reach of Shadows, Gore Swine, Whisperer, Whisperer of the Wilds, Mardu Runemark, Ambush Krotik. I think it's Krotik. It's either Krotik or Krotik. I'm going to keep saying Krotik. I hope this guy doesn't keep coming up pack after pack as he has been thus far. <laughs> Partially because he's not very good. Uh, right into being. And then our first uncommon here, Fascination. Uh, Shifting Loyalties, that's an interesting card that I've not had the chance to play with or against yet. Uh, exchange control of two target permanents that share a card type. Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Land, and Planeswalker are card types. Kind of an interesting card. Uh, channel Harm, also an interesting card. And now our Rare or Mythic, it's a rare, it's Mob Rule. Huh. I don't know if you guys could, uh, could hear that in the background. Uh, I do have a cat, I have two cats, and one of them just meowed, so... You might, you might hear some meowing. Um... This card is very interesting. I'm gonna take a moment to read it. It's uh, four red red sorcery, choose one. Gain control of all creatures with power four or greater until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste until end of turn or gain control of all creatures with power three or less until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste until end of turn. Uh, so this is like a second copy of Insurrection for uh, red EDH players. Uh, I don't think it's as good necessarily, but uh, a lot of EDH players do like, you know, having uh, multiple cards in their deck that do similar things since you can only have one copy of any given card. Uh, and this is certainly a card that I would absolutely love to play in the right deck in, in draft or sealed. Um, I mean, what a, what a game ending blowout this can be. And a Tranquil Cove. And a Manifest Token or Reminder card as some people call them. Okay. Pack 7. Obzon Runemark, Avon Surveyor, Ancestral Vengeance, Warflare, Soul Summons, Sultai Skullkeeper, Hunt the Weak, Mardu Runemark, 
Formless Nurturing. Our first uncommon, uh, that's, yeah, our first uncommon is uh, Ugin's Construct. Then Battle Brawler. And then uh, Arashan Warbeast, or Arishan. Uh, I've heard people pronounce it both as Arishan and Arashan. How do you guys pronounce it? Uh, and a Citadel Siege. Foil Uncommon. Ooh, Foil Pyrotechnics. Considering my love of burn spells, I don't know if this guy is going to be played in any constructed formats. Uh, I tend to doubt it. Five mana for a sorcery is expensive for standard and certainly expensive for modern. Uh, I don't see this being... I mean, this this might see a tiny bit of plain standard, but considering my love of burn spells, I do kind of, as a collector, like to collect foil burn spells. So, foil pyrotechnics is pretty sweet. I would like a foil humble defector, which I thought this... You know, for a moment I was like, oh, foil uncommon red, but... Scoured Barons, and another Manifest Reminder card. Okay. No, uh, no Mythic Rares. In fact, uh, prior to this, through the pre-release and through prize packs and whatnot, uh, both at pre-releases and at Friday Night Magic last night, I'm recording this on the Saturday after the set came out, uh, January 24th, um... I have received, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16 Fate Reforged packs, and out of those 16, I've only opened one Mythic so far. So, uh, hopefully there are a bunch of Mythics at the bottom of this box, or at least throughout the rest. But, of course, that is sort of an obvious statement to make, as I hope, uh, I think most people would hope that when <laughs> opening a booster box. Abzan Advantage, Avon Surveyor, Typhoid Rats, Ethereal Ambush, Dragon Bell Monk, Enhanced Awareness, Hunt the Weak, Mardu Runemark, Formless Nurturing, Tassiger's Cruelty. Our first uncommon is Elite Scale Guard, a card that is elite in draft, I believe. Uh, I haven't had a chance to draft with Fate Reforged yet, but this is a card that I would love to play in that format. Uh, Dark Deal, Sibsig Muck Draggers, and a Jeskai Infiltrator, a card that I played against in uh, uh, in one of my pre-releases. Interestingly enough, uh, when my opponent hit me with it and then did the whole, you know, shuffled the, the, this and, and the top card of his or her library, manifest, both of them, uh, I ended up um, uh, I don't remember the exact scenario, but basically I ended up using a Winter Flame uh, and I was uh, he didn't have the mana to flip this, so I was hoping to, to hit this with, with the two damage. I was fine with either way, like hitting one thing for two and, and tapping down the other thing, but I was hoping to hit this for two since they were both face down. I ended up hitting his manifested card that wasn't this uh, for two, and that manifested card happened to be his own Winter Flame, my opponent's Winter Flame, with, so that was kind of funny. Uh, and then we have a Thornwood Falls and a Warrior Token. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pack nine. This marks the quarter mark through the box. Nine, 18, 27, 36. So this is one quarter of the way through the box. Ancestral Vengeance, Cunning Strike, Obzon Rune Mark, Rakshasa's Disdain, Reach of Shadows, Hooded Assassin, Frontier Mastodon, Alicia's Vanguard, Defiant Ogre, Whisperer of the Wilds, our first uncommon Battlefront Crew Shock. Nice, Wild Slash, one of the cards I mentioned from the uncommon slot. Oh, I also forgot Humble Defector, that's the, uh, another uncommon. Uh, along with Wild Slash, Valor Stance, and Reality Shift that I would like uh, play sets of. I now have two of these, counting one that I already own. So, Noxious Dragon. And our Rare or Mythic. Dramoka the Eternal, our first Dragon Legend. So there's a cycle of Dragon Legends, for those of you that, that don't know, in this set. Uh, one for each allied color combination. This is the Selesnia, green-white dragon. Uh, I was able to defeat an opponent who played this against me at uh, my second pre-release, but this guy is, is quite powerful in Limited. Um, might even see constructed play, though I doubt it, but I definitely like the card from a design standpoint, and the art is really sweet. Good job, uh, Eric Deschamps. Uh, and a Dismal Backwater. Okay. 
So. No fetch lands, mythics, or really out of the ordinary foils yet. Obzon Advantage, Avon Surveyor, Typhoid Rats, Ethereal Ambush, Dragon Bell Monk, Tassiger's Cruelty, Teamer Runemark, Feral Krushok, Lightning Shrieker, Archers of Carsey. Our first uncommon is Cloud Form, Wandering Champion, Fruit of the First Tree. And uh, continuing with uh, the dragon theme, we've got Atarka, World Render, the uh, red green dragon in the cycle, and a Tranquil Cove. Dare I say that we just opened double dragons? My, uh, my producer is looking at me and shaking his head, so I, I will retract that statement. Avon Surveyor, Typhoid Rats, Ethereal Ambush, Dragon Bell Monk. I told you we were going to see these commons quite frequently. Enhanced Awareness, Smoldering Afreet. I don't think we've seen that guy yet, though. Hunt the Weak, Mardu Runemark. I mean, I, I actually don't know for sure, but I, I don't think we've seen a Smoldering Afreet until now. Formless Nurturing, that we've seen a bunch of. Tessiger's Cruelty, our first uncommon Huge Stone Retainers, uh, then Renowned Weaponsmith, and then Mistfire Adept. Uh, a card that, again, I've not had a chance to play with or against yet, but for limited, uh, I would be s totally happy first picking this card. Um, and a scroll of the Masters. I should mention, this contains art by uh, Lake Hurwitz, and this is the first magic card that Lake Hurwitz has, uh, has, like, first card art that Lake has produced, and it's quite good. So, hope to see more from Lake in the future. And a Tranquil Cove and manifest. All right. Well. Perhaps this box will provide us with the reverse of the last one that we opened and have a ton of value near the bottom. Lotus Path Jin, Hooded Assassin, Ethereal Ambush, Obzon Advantage, Refocus, Douse in Gloom, Tassiger's Cruelty, Teamer Battle Rage, Return to the Earth, Mardu Scout, our first uncommon is Sage's Reverie, then Hero's Blade, and then Light Form. Oh, Flamewick Phoenix, nice. One of the rares that uh, I want a playset of. I, I would like to try this out in uh, Teamer, in Mardu, in Mono Red Devotion. Uh, there, this can fit into a lot of different decks in Standard and uh, I see this guy being played quite frequently in, in the coming months in Standard. And a Rugged Highlands. And a Warrior. Okay, Flame Wake Phoenix. Pretty cool. Sand Blast. Jeskai Sage, Sultai Runemark, Grim Contest, Pressure Point, Avon Skirmisher, Smoldering Afrit, Hunt the Weak, Mardu Runemark, Formless Nurturing. It seems like Formless Nurturing has been the last common before the uncommons in a lot of these packs. In fact, it seems like uh, the order of certain cards in many of these packs has been similar for the commons. Interesting to note for, for draft purposes. Board of the Gods, I feel like, was the same way last winter's small set. Uh, Jeskai Barricade is our first uncommon rage form, and then Teamer Sabretooth. Speaking of uh, drafting green decks, woo, do I want to draft this card. And a Crucible of the Spirit Dragon. And a Bloodfell Caves. And a Warrior. Sultai Emissary, Harsh Sustenance. Uh, this was the card, by the way, that I splashed white for. I, I, I had a few cards in my sideboard 
uh, during my second pre-release for Fate Reforged that also prompted me to splash white. But I splashed white in the deck because I had a ton of ways to draw cards or filter through my deck. I had Enhanced Awareness, Monastery Siege, Sultai Soothsayer, um, uh, among other things. And the deck was full of creatures. I actually had uh, like 36 playable cards in my pool and uh, like 28 of them were creatures or something like that. So the deck ended up being... Um, full of creatures, and uh, I felt like in a deck that had uh, good mana and ways to draw or filter, that this splashing for this was not too big of a risk. And it, so that's a uh, card to watch out for in Limited for sure in, in the coming months. Uh, Obzon Sky Captain, Just Guy Rune Mark, Douse and Gloom, Fierce Invocation, Teamer Rune Mark, Tassiger's Cruelty, Mardu Scout. First uncommon is Obzon Beast Master, then Wandering Champion, and then Just Guy Barricade. And Mastery of the Unseen, the card that I uh, received a foil promo of in my Just Guy box with my Sultai pack. <laughs> so. And Foil Sibsig Host, a common zombie. Okay. And a Blossoming Sands. Mm. Manifest, my, uh, my throat is a little bit dry due to the climate at the moment and where I live, so uh, <clears throat> maybe clearing my throat a bit more than usual. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we are through 14. This will be our 15th pack. Okay. Harsh Sustenance, Obzon Sky Captain, Just Guy Rune Mark, Douse and Gloom, War Flare, Formless Nurturing, Sandstep Outcast, Teamer Battle Rage, Hunt the Weak, Fierce Invocation, our first uncommon is Honor's Reward, then Friendly Fire, and then Sibsig Muck Draggers. And here's our first mythic uh, of the box, Warden of the First Tree. Uh, not one of the mythics, I sort of have them ranked I, in this box. I would have uh, Ugin, Monastery Mentor, um, Soulfire Grandmaster, Shaman of the Great Hunt, uh, and Whisperwood Elemental as the five mythics that I was really, or, or still am really hoping to open. I would put, um, um, let's see, Torrent Elemental uh, and Warden of the First Tree on kind of the next tier, and uh, and with Brutal Horde Chief, actually. Uh, those three I'm fine with opening. Uh, and then uh, Temporal Trespass and Ghastly Conscription, the, the spells that uh, don't really want to open those in here, but uh, the sky is, uh, as some people have been calling him, the Obzon figure of destiny, although he's different in significant ways, but uh, our first mythic, Warden of the First Tree. And a Windscarred Crag. I don't think I'm going to be playing uh, Obzon aggro in standard, and... His current price, as of this filming, is about 750 TCG mid. So that actually is a card that I might be looking to trade away in the near future for one of those aforementioned cards, like Shaman of the Great Hunt, that is eh, in the same price range, maybe a little more expensive. But Sandblast, Jeskai Sage, Sibsig Host, Cunning Strike, uh, Irish and Cleric, Teamer Battle Rage, Hunt the Weak, Fierce Invocation, Mardu Scout. First uncommon, Orc Sure Shot, then Grave Strength, Pilgrim of the Fires, and then a Mardu Strike Leader. So I did say earlier with the Warrior token that we may see this guy in here, and here he is. Uh, he definitely is going to be played in a Black-White Warriors deck in Standard. I don't think that deck is going to necessarily be... Uh, I don't know, I, I think that deck will definitely gain some popularity as a fairly inexpensive, straightforward, aggressive deck uh, that can be built uh, with commons and uncommons, and, and sure, some rares and mythics, but there are a lot of cards in that perspective deck, like Chief of the Edge, Chief of the Scale, uh, Mardu Woe Reaper, etc., um, T Tormented Hero and whatnot that are commons and uncommons, or actually all the ones I just mentioned are, are uncommons, but... Uh, and we have a foil... <laughs> foil Sage Eye Avengers, foil rare. The reason I don't sound excited is, uh, this guy is very good and limited. He was my promo card on pre-release 1, uh, and he was great but I have a foil promo pre-release of this guy, so. Foil, oh, that's not focusing. There we go, foil, Sage Eye Avengers. And Jungle Hollow. 
and spirit token. Two more packs to go and we will have hit the halfway mark. So two more packs, we'll be halfway through this booster box. Obzon Advantage, Refocus, Dowson Gloom, Will of the Naga, Obzon Sky Captain, Enhanced Awareness, Teamer Rune Mark, Right Into Being, Bathe in Dragonfire, Map the Wastes, our first uncommon, Elite Scale Guard, Break Through the Line, Renowned Weaponsmith, and a Kolagon, Storm's Fury. So now we have three out of the five Dragon Legends in the, in the set. Uh, so far, this is the Red Black Dragon Legend. And a Bloodstained Mire, so a fetch land. So like I said, there will be, on average, 1.5. Some, some people get one, some people get two, some people might even get three fetch lands per box. Uh, so this is uh, the Red Black Fetch Land. Kind of cool that the Red Black Dragon Legend was in the same pack as the Red Black Fetch Land. And uh, I already had a play set of this card, but I don't mind having a couple of extra fetches or potentially trading away some of my extras. I do need uh, Windswept Teeth still, so I don't mind you know, potentially putting this into a trade in which I receive a windswept teeth, so that's that's cool. And a spirit token. Okay. Enhanced awareness, typhoid rats, grim contest, dragon bell monk, rakshasa's disdain. Uh, Enoch Guide, Alicia's Vanguard, Gore Swine, Whisperer of the Wilds, Mardu Runemark, our first uncommon Diplomacy of the Wastes, uh, Reality Shift. This is the first time we've uh, opened this card, one of the uncommons that I said I was hoping to uh, you know, acquire multiples of in this box. So here we have our first instance of Reality Shift. Interesting, funny story about this quickly. Last night I played uh, uh, a red green. Uh, aggressive deck, or at least an, an aggressive, le you know, leaning on on being more mid range than like straight up aggro. Yeah. But I played that deck at Friday Night Magic, a deck containing some mana ramp and uh, creatures like Pelucranos and Stormbreath Dragon and Ashcloud Phoenix. And uh, my opponent at one point reality shifted my Pelucranos, and the card that I manifested uh, off of the reality shift was my second copy of Pelucranos. So that was kind of funny. Uh, sudden Reclamation and Outpost Siege, the Red Siege, and Jungle Hollow. Oh, and a Monk Token. Good, I want to collect these Monk Tokens. I hope to uh, be playing with Monastery Mentor in the near future, and uh, would like to acquire more of Monastery Mentor's tokens. So that is 18. We have 18 packs halfway through the box. Uh, so half one was Honestly, not that exciting. There was a fetch land, there was a mythic, uh, there were some some foils, but the first half was eh, not super exciting from uh, my perspective anyway, in terms of the cards that I'm really hoping to open here. That being said, we have half a box to go. Dowson Gloom, War Flare, and it's fun just to get, you know, a chance to crack these, these packs on camera and to show people out there uh, what a perspective box of Fate Reforged might look like. Granted, every box is going to be a bit different, but uh, we have the Cleric here, we have Whisk Away, we have uh, Sipsy Coast, Sultai Skullkeeper, Map the Wastes, Lightning Shrieker, Enoch Guide, Sandstep Outcast, our first uncommon here is Fascination, Rage Form, and Merciless Executioner. We have a Mythic, and it's a Ghastly Conscription, one of the Mythics that I said I didn't really want to open. In fact, uh, they, they've been kind of over the past year on a string of producing kind of wonky but ultimately not that widely accepted black mythics things like uh worst fears and champion of stray souls and hythonia the cruel you know kind of neat cards that just don't really see a lot of play anywhere so swiftwater cliffs it's kind of neat art right there
Okay. We have in this pack a harsh sustenance, pressure point, whisk away, sultai emissary, just guy rune mark, goblin heal cutter, map the wastes, collateral damage, formless nurturing, sandstep outcast. Our first uncommon is fruit of the first tree, and then a valorous stance, nice. And then a winds of Kalsisma. And uh, <laughs> I'm resisting the urge to, uh, to it's it's supplant form. If you've Listen to uh, the limited resources, rare and mythic review. I'm resisting the urge to say sup plant form, but uh, we have a supplant form and a bloodfell caves and a spirit token. The Naga, Ancestral Vengeance, Cunning Strike, Abzan Rune Mark, Rakshasa's Disdain, Enoch Guide, Alicia's Vanguard, Gore Swine, Whisperer of the Wilds, Mardu Rune Mark. Our first uncommon is Cash Defenses, then Lotus Eye Mystics, and then Ruthless Instincts, and then a Yasova Dragon Claw. Uh, this is a card that uh, I played at one of my pre releases. Uh, I look forward to trying her out in. Uh, a teamer deck with just lots of haste creatures, things like Fanatic of Zanagos and Flamewake Phoenix and Shaman of the Great Hunt and Stormbreath Dragon and Sarkin and uh, so she will fit into that deck quite nicely. Uh, I like her a lot with Shaman of the Great Hunt because uh, if you are able to keep her alive, you know, through attacks, uh, because she has trample, she'll start getting plus one plus one counters and then be able to steal bigger stuff. So uh, she's quite cool and she. Uh, I guess walks fairly softly because she's on snow. She carries a, a big stick and she's petting a big cat. So, yeah. And a scoured barons and a monk. Another monk. Cool. Monk count is at two. <laughs> okay. Even skirmisher. Lotus Path Jin, Sultai Emissary, Harsh Sustenance, Abzan Sky Captain, Just Guy Rune Mark, Collateral Damage, Teamer Rune Mark, Right into Being, Bathe in Dragon Fire. Our first uncommon is Battlefront blah, 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 Battlefront Crew Shock. Then Meringue Rival. Blah, blah, blah. Apparently I can't pronounce these uncommons now. Meringue River Prowler. And Mistfire Adept. And oh, okay. Well now I have all five of the cons. Here is Dagatar the Adamant. Um so we've opened three of them in this box. Uh, I have an Alicia and a Tassiger elsewhere. So uh, this is, by the way, speaking of our Zach Stella, uh, I think really knocked this one out of the park. I, I love the armor, the mace, the color scheme. This is, uh, I mean, the only knock I have, I guess, is, is that with his activated ability being uh, Golgari, like black, green, black, green hybrid, um, there's a lot of red in this artwork. Sorry, brief technical difficulties. Uh, Dagatar the Adamant. And Blossoming Sands. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, because I'm running out of space on this playmat here, I'm going to just consolidate these cards, uh, and then I'll be back in just a moment. So in a moment, you're just going to see more of an empty playmat. This is going to be uh, a nice little fade transition or something like that. We'll be back in just a moment. So as I said, back with some more space. So let's keep going. Gurmag Angler, Refocus, Soul Summons, Will of the Naga, Ancestral Vengeance, Cunning Strike, Teamer Battle Rage, Return to the Earth, Mardu Scout, Archers of Karsi. Uh, nice, our first in common is Humble Defector. Uh, this is a guy that uh, a lot of people are excited about. I certainly uh, like that, though there's a drawback, uh, there, are ways <clears throat> there are ways to mitigate it, and I like that Red gets uh, somewhat of a a uh, card draw card. Right of Undoing, Cloud Form, and a Palace Siege. Uh, so actually, other than the Blue Siege, I think we've opened up every... Yeah, we've opened up four of the five Sieges thus far. There are a lot of cycles at Rare in this set. The Dragons, the Cons, the Sieges, uh, and a Rugged Highlands, and a Spirit. Okay. 
stay tuned in the near future. Uh, I also have a fat pack of Fate Reforged. I will be opening that at some point in the near future, so stay tuned for that video as well. Pressure Point, Even Skirmisher, Lotus Path Jin, Hooded Assassin, Ethereal Ambush, Teamer Battle Rage, Return to the Earth, Mardu Scout, Archers of Carsey. Fierce Invocation, uh, Teamer Sabretooth is our first uncommon. Mind Scour Dragon, Wesley Burt, good job on the art. That's a piece of art that I like and would really like a foil of. I mean, look at the eye really stands out in non-foil, so. Neutralizing Blast, and a Soul Flare. So we have, uh, the Master of Abilities. Dismal Backwater is our land for the pack. Mag Angler, Refocus, Soul Summons, Will of the Naga, Ancestral Vengeance, Teamer Battle Rage, Return to the Earth, Murder Scout, you guys have seen all of these already, <laughs> Archers of Carsey, Fierce Invocation, Vault Breaker is our first uncommon, Destructor Dragon, Paratechnics, and a Monastery Siege. So we have now opened all five of the sieges. And a Windscarred Crag, and a Warrior. Jeskai Runemark, Sandblast, Jeskai Sage, Sibsig Host, Cunning Strike, uh, Erishin Cleric, Lightning Shrieker, Anok Guide, uh, Sandstep Outcast, Smoldering Afrit. Our first uncommon is uh, the Erishin Warbeast, then Dragon Rage, and then Bloodfire Enforcers, and a Monastery Mentor. There we go. There we go. So, this is. Uh, a card along with Humble Defector now that Treasure Cruise is banned that I am actually uh, interested in trying out in my modern burn deck. Uh, I, I may be cutting blue from it, I probably will be now that Treasure Cruise is banned in modern and uh, it will be primarily a red-white deck. Well, pr primarily red with a splash of white for Lightning Helix and uh, Burrow's Charm and I, I want to try this guy out as a one-of uh, just as the type of card that can take the game away on his own. If you cast him, he survives and then you start pumping out burn spells. Um, uh, I don't think I will be playing, uh, most people don't play Young Pyromancer in that deck because, uh, you know, he doesn't have Haste, Monastery, Swift Spear, and Goblin Guide do, uh, and, you know, Eidolon of the Great Revel and Grim Lava Mancer are recurring sources of damage, but this guy can just generate so many, uh, additional creatures, so much additional value, uh, just off of what you want to be doing anyway, which is casting a bunch of spells, so... Uh, this is a card that I really like. This is one of the cards I was hoping to get out of this box. You know, one, one of my top cards that I wanted to open here, so. Speak little, do much. And a jungle hollow. And a spirit token. Okay. Great. So like I said, it's possible that we encounter a bunch of value at the bottom of this box. Um, though I'm certainly not unhappy with, uh, you know, uh, Bloodstained Mire and Monastery Mentor. So, Dragon Bell Monk, Enhanced Awareness, Gurmag Angler, Refocus, Soul Summons, Feral Krushok, Greathorn Krushok, I've seen those two back to back already, uh, Bathe in Dragonfire, Frontier Mastodon, Defiant Ogre, uh, and now our first uncommon here, Mardu, Mardu Shadow Spear, a card that I don't think we've looked at yet in this booster box opening. Uh, another possible one drop for a Black White Warriors deck, Dark Deal. Uh, and another possible one drop for a Black White Warriors deck, Mardu Woe Reaper. And Crux of Fate. So perhaps this box does have all the value at the bottom. Crux of Fate is uh, probably going to drop a bit in price. Right now it's mid is 650 on TCG Player. And uh, uh, this is the uh, format's Black Wrath. This is a card that's going to be uh, in, in Sultai Control and primarily, I think, Blue Black Control uh, with Silimgar, who synergizes beautifully with this card. Uh, so I'm very happy to acquire a Crux of Fate. And a Thornwood Falls. All right. Okay, we've got Obzon Runemark, 
Rakshasa's Disdain, Reach of Shadows, Hooded Assassin, Even Skirmisher, Lotus Path, Jin, Fierce Invocation, Feral Crew Shock, Great Horn Crew Shock, Bathe in Dragonfire. Our first uncommon is a Mardu Wo Reaper, then a Battlefront Crew Shock, a Merang River Prowler, and a Wild Call. <clears throat> kind of a cool design. You get uh, to manifest the top card of your library and then put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is uh, whatever you pay plus two green, so the casting cost is green, green, and X. And a Dismal Backwater. So, it's not guaranteed, but it's possible that we have another Mythic in here, or uh, uh, another Fetch Land, so I would, I would love another Fetch Land. Uh, an Ugin or a Soulfire Grandmaster or a Shaman of the Great Hunt would be nice. Um, one thing I don't know is whether or not the spot with the uh, the land can be a foil fetch land. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. So if anyone out there knows, please please let me know because that's something that I'm not sure about. Just Guy Sage, Sib Sig Host, Cunning Strike, Erish and Cleric, Abzon Advantage, Bathe in Dragonfire, Map the Wastes, Anok Guy, Lightning Shrieker, Sandstep Outcast, our first uncommon is Sage's Reverie, then Battle Brawler, and then Hero's Blade. And there's a Tassiger, the Golden Fang. Uh, nice, this guy is, along with Crux of Fate, one of the more expensive regular rares, non-mythic rares in the set. Uh, a lot of people are really excited about this guy. I mean, uh, there is, uh, let's see, off of one, one, two, three, four. Uh, there certainly is a way in modern to get this guy in play on turn two for one mana. <laughs> you, or, I mean, even actually on turn two for two mana, you can, um, Play a fetch land, go search for a blue source, Thought Scour. Thought Scour puts two cards in your graveyard, plus the Thought Scour, plus the fetch land, that's four cards. And then on turn two, you play another land, delve away those four cards, tap the two and uh, land, and you have a four five on the battlefield. On turn two, it's possible if you pull that off that he's gonna be bigger than, I mean, it's not not definite, but uh, it's kind of like getting a Tarmogoyf into play. Like, there, there's certainly gonna be, uh, some black green, you know, some some uh, Obzon decks, or maybe even some Sultai decks that would want more copies of Tarmogoyf, um, or or even uh, Jund decks, because you could play him in, in Jund with black green red. I mean, you don't need blue to activate his uh, activated ability, and his activated ability is is nice, but definitely uh, not like you 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 could play him without that and still be happy because of the value you'd be getting out of a, a four five for such a low mana investment with the delve ability. So he's, he's pretty sweet. I'm, I'm gonna hesitate for making the obvious joke. I'll just put this up close. So I'm gonna hesitate from using the, the word that would make, yep, because there are those, those things next to him and he's that, okay. Uh, moving on, Windscarred Crag, Spirit. I don't actually know if, if he's that good to use that word, but the joke has been made. It's an obvious one, so. <laughs> okay. I, I have to admit, uh, I, I like listening to limited resources, and uh, although I really loved Brian's strategic analysis, uh, I, I'm the kind of person who appreciates Louis Scott Vargas's style of humor, so some of the jokes that I'm making here are jokes that, that he made, but I have to say that he and I think alike when it comes to uh, puns and using words and head-slappingly awkward ways, so... Uh, Sultai Skullkeeper, Sand Blast, with a thing on the side. Uh, Jeskai Sage, Sultai Rune Mark, Grim Contest, Smoldering Ifrit, Hunt the Weak, Mardu Rune Mark, uh, Formless Nurturing, Tassiger's Cruelty, our first uncommon is Abzan Kinguard, then Shifting Loyalties, and uh, then Frostwalker. <clears throat> wow, the first Frostwalker we've seen in this entire box. So. Oh, and then a Shaman of the Great Hunt. So. The stuff that I wanted uh, is hiding out at the bottom of this box. I'm Monastery Mentor and now a Shaman of the Great Hunt, so I, I guess we just needed to to dig through time for these cards. Uh, see, I deliver on the on the promise of, of wordplay. Uh, so this guy, I, I, last night at Friday Night Magic, I tried out a green-red deck, and I want to build into a teamer version of the deck, and I really uh, think that this guy synergizes quite beautifully with a lot of the cards that... Uh, this set adds to that archetype. Uh, I like him with Yasova, for reasons stated previously. I like him with Flamewake Phoenix. 
uh, because you can play the Phoenix and then uh, on the following turn play this guy and the Phoenix is going to get bigger. Uh, I like him with, uh, you know, being, I like him in a deck that not only has lots of four power creatures already without his, you know, plus one, plus one counter ability like Stormbreath Dragon, uh, like uh, Sarkin, like Yasova, um, and like Savage Knuckleblade, etc, etc. But I also like the fact that, um, that a lot of these creatures have haste. Knuckleblade, you can, you can pay to give it haste. Flame Wake Phoenix has haste. Stormbreath has haste. Sarkin, if you make him into a creature when you play him, has haste. This guy has haste. So it's almost like you just have this Fires of Yavimaya thing going on, even though, uh, or, you know, the modern day version would be something like Teamer Ascendancy, but it's almost like you have that going on without the need to use a spot in your deck for an enchantment. Um, so I really like this guy in, in that sub deck, and I want to keep, you know, I like Just Guy a lot in Standard, but I also think that that deck is worth uh, testing. Uh, it suits my playstyle, uh, or at least, you know, it, it suits one of the types of playstyles that, that that I'm familiar with and that I uh, like playing, and uh, this guy's going to go into that deck, I think, quite beautifully. So, Shaman of the Great Hunt. Sweet. Ah, sweet, sweet, oh, Swift Water Cliffs, not Sweet Water Cliffs. Yeah. So, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six packs left. So, I am uh, quite happy with some of these later packs in the box. So let's see what happens during our, our final uh, assault here. We've got, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say we've got a Cunning Strike, and now an Abzan Rune Mark, and then a Rakshasa's Disdain, Reach of Shadows, Hooded Assassin, Feral Krushok, Greathorn Krushok. That's three packs now where those two cards have been back to back in that order. Interesting. Bathe in Dragonfire, Frontier Mastodon, Defiant Ogre, Frostwalker, number two now. Uh, that's our first uncommon. Mardu's Shadow Spear, and Dark Deal. And Alicia, who smiles at death. So, uh, Tassiger, Alicia, Dagatar, Shuyun, and Yasova, we've opened uh, all five sieges and all five cons in this box. Uh, not all five dragons yet. We we've opened three of those. We haven't seen Ojutai or um, what's the other one? Uh, Silimgar. Those two uh, we have not seen yet. But Alicia, who smiles at death, and Blossoming Sands, and uh, Spirit Token. We haven't encountered too many foils down here, but uh, I suspected that that would be the case, seeing as. Um, we opened a bunch of foils early on in the box. We may have another foil lurking, though. Not in this pack. Oh, no. It, yes, in this pack. I'm sorry, I just cheated. It's a common, but I just looked at the... Uh, Soul Summons, Will of the Naga. I don't know what the rare is yet, though. Ancestral Vengeance, Cunning Strike, Abzan Rune Mark, Right into Being, Goblin Heal Cutter, Map the Wastes, Collateral Damage. Our first of common is Goblin Boom Keg. Uh, then Ugin's Construct, and then uh, Wild Slash. Nice. And a Sandstep Mastodon. Love the art on this. There's a lot of great art in this set. Uh, James Zapata did this, and uh, it's quite nice. Simple simple background, but it uh, kind of frames the foreground nicely and uh, is a really, really nice image. Our foil is a Formless Nurturing. Which is a common. It looks quite neat in foil. Very cool. And our land is a rugged highlands. And then a manifest token. Four packs to go. Sultai Skull Keeper, Reach of Shadows, Harsh Sustenance, Pressure Point, Whisk Away. Sultai Emissary, Teamer Rune Mark, Right into Being, Bathe in Dragonfire, Map the Wastes. Our first uncommon is Shock Maw Dragon, then Channel Harm, and then Huge Stone Retainers, and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. So the value was at the bottom of this box. Wow. Yay. Uh, I mean, since I stacked up the sort of uh, first grouping cards, it wasn't exactly half, it was a little more than half, but since I stacked up the first half plus a few packs, uh, we've, in the second half of this box, encountered Monastery Mentor, Shaman of the Great Hunt, and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Uh, three of the mythics that I really, really want to open. Ugin and Monastery Mentor being among the top three mythics that I want to open along with Soulfire Grandmaster. And uh, now we've opened five mythics total in this box and a fetch land. Um, so the, the bottom of this box did have a lot of the value. Uh, pretty sweet. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. 
the only Planeswalker in the set, the second ever colorless Planeswalker, the first being Karn, uh, and he is uh, kind of the, uh, the main character of this set, and a very, very cool, cool card that's going to go into a lot of EDH and casual decks, and that's saying nothing of modern Tron applications and standard mono green or control finisher applications. So, UG the Spirit D. Scoured Barons and a Spirit Token. <laughs> what? What? Filming filming a booster box opening uh, the way that I do, that, you know, it takes about an hour and you need to be a little bit lighthearted to keep the energy going. Okay, our next pack has War Flare, Ereshin Cleric, Whisk Away, Sibsig Host, Sultai Skull Keeper, Feral Krushok, Lightning Shrieker, also known as Lava Axe with Wings, Archers of Karsi, Smoldering Afrit. Our first uncommon is a Huge Stone Retainers, followed by Abzan Kingard and Shifting Loyalties. Uh, and okay, so four out of five dragons. Silumgar the Drifting Death. This is the blue black dragon. Uh, he has flying and hexproof. He's a 3 7, and it says whenever a dragon you control attacks, creatures defending player controls get minus one, minus one until end of turn. He is definitely uh, a card that people have been talking about in blue black control. Uh, as a card that will help that archetype to become better in standard. And uh, he's got big teeth. Come on, focus. Come on, camera. There we go. Uh, but the teeth look sweet on the foil version. Anyway, uh, we have now only uh, Ojutai. Soul of Winter or Winter's Soul? One of those, but we have uh, the the white blue dragon is the only dragon that we have not opened yet. We have two more packs to go, so it's possible that we uh, find Ojutai in one of those. And a foil war flare, which is a common. Uh, I like collecting foils for the art, though, and this is definitely a card with some sweet foil art. So, foil war flare and a Swiftwater Cliffs. So, and a manifest card. Regular war flare at the beginning of the pack, foil war flare at the end of the pack. Two more packs to go. After Mentor Shaman Ugin, uh, I'm pretty happy, but I wouldn't mind another fetch land. Of course, who would? Whisk away. Sipsig Host. The one that I really need is I, I have uh, uh, only Windswept Teeth left to, to acquire more more of. Like, I need a uh, couple more copies to have a play set of Windswept Teeth. So, Sipsig Host, Sultai Skullkeeper, Sandblast, at least from the cons fetches. Just Guy Sage, Sultai Rune Mark, or I guess originally the um, the uh, onslaught fetches. Uh, Ambush Krotic, Gore Swine, Frontier Mastodon, Alicia's Vanguard. Our first uncommon is Noxious Dragon, followed by Honor's Reward and Hungering Yeti. And a Flame Rush Rider is our rare. And a Windscarred Crag uh, is our land. So if we are going to encounter another fetch land it's gonna be in this pack because this is the last pack in the booster box so typhoid rats grim contest dragon bell monk rakshasa's disdain gurmag angler sultai rune mark lightning shrieker inok guide sandstep outcast smoldering afrit our first uncommon is light form then Shockmaw Dragon, and then Channel Harm. And our last rare or mythic, barring a foil. It's a rare, and it's an Archfiend of Depravity. Depravity? 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 Tomato, tomato? Depravity. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the flavor text is quite good. Why would I kill you all? Who then would be left to worship me? Uh, but he does have a bunch of, of bodies lying around, so he's not a nice guy. And do we have a fetch land? Nope, we have a Thornwood Falls, and that will do it. So, quick recap. We opened five mythics in this box uh, in order. Warden of the First Tree, Ghastly Conscription, Monetary Mentor, Monetary Mentor, <laughs> Monastery Mentor, Shaman of the Great Hunt, and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. We opened one fetch land, a Bloodstained Mire. Uh, we opened one foil rare, a Sage Eye Avengers. 
We opened a bunch of other foils, uh, including a Paratechnics and foil commons like Warflare and Formless Nurturing. Uh, we opened a foil Swiftwater Cliffs early on. Uh, we <clears throat> uh, opened a couple of Valorous Stands, a couple of Wild Slash, a Reality Shift, uh, a Humble Defector from the Uncommons that I wanted. Uh, we opened all five Cons, all five Sieges, four out of the five Legendary Dragons, missing only Ojutai. Uh, and uh, off the top of my head, that sounds like a recap of the important stuff that we saw in here. A Flame Wake Phoenix, I should mention, also one of the regular non-mythic Oh, uh, Flamewick Phoenix, Cru Crux of Fate, and Tassiger, um, among the more valuable regular rares in the set. Uh, all three of those were in this box. So overall, this box was solid. I'd rate it, you know, I don't, I don't know if I should rate the box, but like a B plus, I guess. Um, I reserve an, an A rating for a box with uh, Foil Mythic or, you know, some sort of strangely skewed number of something like three fetch lands or... or uh, a bunch of foil rares, but that being said, this box was solid, uh, contained a lot of cool cards, uh, was really fun to open, and like I said, I will be soon opening a fat pack of Fate Reforged, so hopefully uh, some really cool cards will be contained inside of that fat pack. I also, uh, in the near future, will be uh, posting some more uh, uh, opening 7 videos and uh, some videos with uh, decks from different formats like Modern and EDH. You know. So um, I've been having a bit of a computer issue with, uh, with my, uh, my main editing computer over the past month, which is why I have not posted anything in, in a little bit. Uh, hopefully I will have that sorted out in the near future. Uh, regardless, I will find a way to continue to get content out there uh, as I enjoy making it and I hope you enjoy watching it. So. Until next time, this is Metallion Magic, signing out.